we are going to make some cooked and buttered turnips. Now, you might tell me you don't like turnips, but maybe you never had them the right way. And if you had them cooked and buttered, then, and you still don't like them, then maybe you just don't like them. But you know what? <laughs> <laughs> well, your taste is constantly changing, all right? So you need to try them again. I'm getting ready to peel this turnip, and I've saved one. And I don't know if you can see, but there's a difference here. Like here you can see there's lines that go in, and then there's this white right here, right here. Okay, that is the skin, and you don't want to leave any of that on there. So, like if you pick them out of the garden, it probably won't work now. Can you see how that kind of peeled off of there when I pulled it, how it kind of came off of there? That is actually skin. And it's a different color of white. If you can see, it's a different color of white. Yeah. And then when you get down to the bottom, it's actually smaller, but you can still see it. So anyway, what you want to do is you want to you want to take that off of there. I usually don't go that way. I peel it just like an apple. And, and I take that off, and I probably take off more than I need to, but I don't want any of that skin in there because it's just not... Better, it's not good. Well, better better a little good. too much and not enough, the right? Thing about, the thing about turnips is we eat them raw as well. I love them raw. Not everybody does. Raw, they have kind of a peppery flavor, like a radish does. But I like that. But when you cook them, it brings out the sweetness in them. Some people make turnip soup. I don't know. My dad's wife does. I don't know what she calls it, something. I think it's a Polish dish or something. But um, I don't care for turnip soup. But I do like just cooked and buttered turnips. Um, oh, yeah. And if you've never, ever given turnips a try... You know, I know we had said in some past videos about hard times coming upon us and things that keep, turnips keep really, really well. Turn And turnips are, they're like a cash crop. I mean, if, if you can bring yourself to eat them and like them, they keep so well. Oh, you absolutely. can plant them as cover crops in your garden to keep the weed pressure down over the winter time. And they're, they're excellent. Well, not necessarily the winter time, but in the off season. Well, so... It was was it last? I think it was last Turnips year. Turnips get sweeter after a frost. So if you let them in the ground until they frost, they get sweeter. Go ahead, Jim. I, I think it was last year we actually sliced some up and cooked them and mashed them. And yeah. had mashed turnips like yeah. mashed and potatoes good. and oh, they yeah. were amazing. And they're good too. But to to cook them and, and butter them, we just we just take them and cut them up, you know, just, just like you're going to do a potato. Oh, see, that one's not good. This one got too big. So this one probably is no good all the way through. Yep, that one's no good. Yeah, so we're not going to use that one. Kind of like a Christmas present. You never know what you're going to get until you get open. inside. That's exactly right. So, and it's it's what we call pethy. It's, it's, it's gotten hollow. So, and that was a pretty big turnip. And the smaller the turnip is, generally speaking, the sweeter the turnip is. So what we do is we just cut these about a quarter of an inch thick and then cut those pieces up into basically bite size bite size pieces. I don't know this one I might cut this way twice. And I, I don't And I, we're gonna take these and put them in some water and boil them and when they're done, when they're soft, we're gonna drain the water off of them and we're gonna put melted butter and some salt and pepper on them and they are amazing they're really really good oh they're 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 awesome i was going to say those mashed turnips that we made last year yeah, were actually last year. a very that or mashed cauliflower either one is an amazing mashed potato substitute they're delicious it's it's just it's 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 it's, it's a good it's like i said it's a, it's a crop that keeps extremely well and and it's 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 tasty you, you, and like you said you can mash them you can cook them and you can butter them and they're they're really good i will say this is my favorite way to eat them <laughs> really? yeah they do not can well though they they go brown when you can them so i and i did try it and, I, and i'm gonna try it again too and the next time i'm gonna try putting a little fruit fresh on it um, because they went brown, but they tasted fine, but boy, were they ever ugly. They were good mashed, but last year when you made them this way, it was by far my, my favorite. And this I is the way mom, mom made them when we were growing up, too. And they're awesome. Mm, I love them raw. Most vegetables I love raw. Absolutely. 
some vegetables I like raw, and I don't really like cooked. Well, how many time, how many potatoes do you think you and I ate raw out of the out Lots. of the garden over the years with Grandpa? Lots. Yeah. It took me a long time to like it cooked. Amazing. And, and, and we also want to say with turnips, the whole waste not whatnot thing, turnip greens. You can. Oh. Knows you can, you can turnip buy greens, turnip so. greens in the store. Yeah. Well, you can make your own and the buttered turnips that go with it. Right. And then, and then you haven't wasted anything. Now we bought these turnips in the similar store, to the red beets so. we talked about at the fireside chat. Yeah. You can and eat the tops as yes, well. Yes, but red beet tops are way better than turnip tops. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So all we're going to do is just put these in a pot of water and cook them. Drain the water off and throw a little butter on them. And that's that's all there is. There's really nothing to show except for I wanted you guys to see about the peeling. You need to get that peeling off because if you don't, you're not going to be happy with the turnip. And we're super thankful you could join us for Christmas dinner. Definitely. <laughs> Too bad you're not going to be here. You would not believe how this... Kitchen is smelling. Whoo, baby. Okay, the next thing we're going to make is we're going to make um, stuffed acorn squash. We're actually going to make a stuffing to go in it. Just because I think that would taste really tasty. So in this pot, I have a half a pound of pork sausage and a half of a sweet, medium-sized sweet onion. And if you can see, we're starting to smoke. I need to get going. See the brown in there? We're going to deglaze this with just some canned chicken stock. Good God, don't ask me how much I dumped in, but I think we're probably gonna end up with a can or a half a can. So I'm gonna scratch this all around. Where is my favorite tool, Gino? Oh, I can get that for you. I don't know if it's in there, I think. It's in there. I haven't used it yet. Wow, how can I have not used it yet? There you go, I don't know. Oh, beauteous. It's beyond me. Excellent. I can't live without these. This is awesome. It's scraping that goodness off the bottom of that pan. We want all that. That's where our onions have caramelized and the fat out of the pork sausage, you know, it's that's the goodness. So we're going to dump that in there. We're just going to tip it on its side. Whatever we need to do to get everything off this pan. Some of it's on the sides. We want to get all of it off of there. We don't want to leave any goodness, no goodness left behind. <laughs> <laughs> and you know I'm all about the goodness. Oh yeah. If you're gonna eat, it's just gotta be good. Yeah, I don't, I don't eat but once a day, and usually it's not even something good really. But yeah, when I have the time, I like to eat something that tastes really good. So we're gonna put that in there, and then on top of this, we're gonna dump. I have um, a half a cup of chopped cranberries. I only mm. diced them because I wanted some bigger pieces. And in this half a cup of cranberries, I have a quarter cup of sugar. And we're gonna dump that in here. And I'm just gonna get as much of that in here as I can. We want a little sweetness because those cranberries are tart. Let me tell you, when, give... when you cook like this, it's worth waiting all day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to give those ooh, a turn and whop my turnips back here a little cooking. So we're just going to give those a little mix in there. And then we're going to add some Take more. Take a gander in that pot, Leslie. Go ahead. We're going to add, I have five cups of seasoned, bought like Pepperidge Farm or whatever it is, bread cubes. I use the seasoned stuff because... I like how they taste. If you don't like the seasoning in them, don't use them. So we're going to give this a stir around and absorb that liquid and the little bit of fat that was in our sausage out of there. And then we're going to add more liquid until we have it as soft as you like it. Some people like a real soft type stuffing that is almost like... Mush. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and by all means, I mean, if you have stale bread... You can use that. It's just going to be more mushy than breadcrumbs you buy at the And store. by all means, if you don't like cranberries and you don't want it, don't put it in here. You know, you can add something else. I'll tell you what would be good in here if you weren't going to put cranberries in here. Um, some cheddar cheese or some asiago oh, yeah. cheese. Or even, that would if be really you good. wanted to add them, even raisins would be Speaking good. Speaking of asiago cheese, we might actually top this <clears throat> with a little asiago cheese towards the end. We could because certainly do I that, that because we good. have some. Yes, we do. One of my favorite cheeses. Maybe on top of it before it bakes in the squash. What do you think? After it's almost done baking yeah. in the squash. 
This yeah. is this is not going to do anything. We're, we're just going to take this just like it is, and we're going to stuff our squash with it, and we're going to throw it in the oven along with our duck. And you'll get a peek at our duck when we do that. Oh, yeah. And I think I have enough liquid in here. I don't think I want, maybe, maybe a shot, just because it's going to dry out a little bit in the oven. But I think that's enough. We're going to turn this off. Okay, so we clean, cut our acorn squash in half and cleaned out the insides. And I went ahead and cut a flat spot. Just made one cut on the bottom so it'll sit flat. And, and just like, like you did the butternut squash, correct? You got all yes. that stringy, yes. now, fibrous stuff out of there. Now I'm going to go inside of here and I'm going to just cut this, not, not through the outside skin, but I'm just gonna cut this because I'm gonna put a little butter in here, and I also want the flavor from our stuffing to help season the squash. I know we're gonna eat it all together, but I want it, I want to impart that flavor into the squash. So it's just, we're just, we're just cutting down. You can see how far, and it might not be that way uniformly throughout. It doesn't matter. This isn't a test. So, <laughs> you know. You're just, you're just feeling, no. you know, the... Th this is Christmas dinner, not a test. It gets, it gets tougher when you get near the outside skin, so... So we're just going to do that on both of them. And then we're going to take a little butter. I'm going to lay a couple of thin pats of butter, about a sixteenth of an inch thick in our squash. Well, something keeps sticking my finger, doesn't it? We're gonna lay that in. Wow, there. I don't know if you guys can hear that fireplace popping in the background or not, but it is so awesome. I don't have a fireplace at home and I don't wanna go home. I have okay. one at home and I don't wanna go home either. <laughs> <laughs> I like the fireplace. I love the mountains. I like it. I would move here in a heartbeat. Okay, maybe just a slight bit more. Because as that melts, that'll run down into those cracks of that squash. And we're just going to take our stuffing, which is still hot, so it's going to melt butter right away, which is okay. It's going straight in the oven. And we're going to squish this down in there. We're going to stuff the squash. And we'll probably have extra leftover, so I'll probably just throw it in a little dish and throw it in there with it. Any little baking dish will do anything that's oven safe. But I'm going to mound these up on here too because I don't want this part of the squash to dry out. So it's not just going to be inside that stuffed. But I'm going to I'm going to try to put a layer. Mound up around the edges? Yeah, I'm going to try to put a little bit of a oh, yeah. layer around you, there. you so. got to believe the goodness will run down into the rest of that squash. And I like how that stuffing, dressing, whatever you want to call it, gets crispy. The bread crumbs get crispy on the edges. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to give me what I want for there. And I'm sorry, but sometimes there is no other choice but to use your hands. And that's just how it is when you cook. Well, at least as long as you wash them first, it's going in the oven. I mean, as it many is, dishes as I've done today, my hands are in the sink every time I turn away. You know, so yeah. This is how you build up an, a tolerance. <laughs> Your immune system Natural increases. Immunity. Yes. Okay, so actually, you know what? We have so little left. I'm just going to divide this. Pack it all in there. Oh, yeah. Pack it on the top. Mm -hmm. And it'll get nice and crispy. And I can't wait to see this when it comes out of the oven. I wish y'all were here. And I'll tell you what, if it looks good to you, you think about trying to make this for your Christmas because this is going to be excellent for our Christmas. We're just going to throw this in the oven and we'll see what it looks like later. Oh, my goodness. And that is a Christmas feast. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. 
And there it is, guys. The finished product of our lovely Christmas dinner. Sorry, no taste test today. There's just too many things to taste and it would take too long. So we'll just say Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, God bless you all, and we'll see you in 2022.